Posey Parker decided to go on talk radio and uh, absolutely smashed it. I, I'm talking out of the ballpark, kind of smashed it. And uh, she's done this previously with, with other people who have interviewed her on there and made them look ridiculous. But uh, this one was particularly interesting because the host really doesn't get it and did so stark the difference in just the understanding of what's going on. So this is, of course, the debate around whether or not you can change your sex. And uh, the scientific answer is new. Uh, the turf answer is new. And uh, the trans rights activist answer is yes, which doesn't make any sense, but okay. So we'll get this up if we can. So this is the tweet from Talk Radio here. And as you can see, they interviewed uh, Posey Parker or Kelly Jane Keen. I, I, I prefer Posey Parker because just it's what I'm used to at this point. Rolls off the tongue as well. Yeah, also uh, it's it's like Sargon or, or Carl, you know, if you're used to one, then fair enough. And uh, you can see the discussion here is about JK Rowling's horrible, disgusting views in the trans row that women are women. And uh, James says, I'm slightly staggered by your views. And Posey says, what, that biological sex exists? As they list there. <laughs> that's, that's what he is staggered by. About five years ago-ish, maybe a bit more than that, that would have been just Probably a normal normal. thing to say. And all of a sudden people are just like, I can't even conceive of how, how we can hold these absurd views. You like cancelled, like, as you will say. Clearly these people held these views for most of their life yeah. as well. This it's... went terribly, and we will play the whole thing because I think it is worth going through. But I want to go to immediately his response afterwards because he noticed that a lot of people thought he, he did incredibly poorly. And uh, he responds with, there's a lot of noise over this interview. In my opinion, uh, Chris Rankin explains it better when he says, quote, when a trans person says that they are male or female, that is what they are. And that is how we should treat them. It is damaging to them to say otherwise. So when I was a kid and I called myself a dinosaur, if you didn't call me a, a dinosaur, it was damaging to me. This is the attack helicopter meme all yes, over again. But <laughs> repurposed in, in a case that is actually true. Yeah. And uh, you with your psychological background, you can actually speak to this stuff better than I can. But uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure you will be as much cringing as we well, will be, as we yeah, enjoy. Validating people's delusions is not good. Let's go Funnily for, enough. Let's go for the first clip. If somebody says that they're a, a female and they're not, and they get found out, then they've been dishonest. It does it mean that they should lose, lose their livelihood? Absolutely not, depending on obviously what that job is. But um, no, I, I don't really, I don't really understand how that's got anything to do with J.K. Rowling. Well, it's got everything to do with it because, if, for example, you have a look at the discrimination that does arrive at people. So you have, so this individual here, born as George Jameson transitioned and then uh, became uh, became a model. And then when uh, she was exposed as having been originally born as a man, as opposed to uh, the woman that she uh, portrayed, then uh, her life was kind of over and the discrimination started. And so I wanted to pause it there because this is an issue that I don't really come back to at any point of the debate, which is really quite sad because it's uh, a starting point of just how wrong James there is. Uh, so he says that a man, biological man who thinks he's a woman, wants to be a woman, therefore is a trans woman, uh, goes out to do modeling or something, and then they find out that, well, he's not a woman, he's a biological man, therefore, well, this position is for women. Bye. You don't get to do this position. That's discrimination that's unacceptable, cannot have that in society, this is disgusting, and, and Posey Parker is approving of this sort of stuff by saying that men are men and women are women. Um, yeah, and is my response to that? It's in the same way that if you wanted to play George Floyd in an upcoming movie, you kind of have to be black. <laughs> be a bit, bit weird if he was white in the whole movie. Yeah, there are, there are certain criteria that you kind of have to get right if you're doing a certain role, right? To be a female model, you have to be a female. I don't think that's unreasonable. And if this person had just not told them, well, then he was being deceitful as well, wasn't he? In the fact that he uh, was not saying that, you know, he was a man and is a man biologically. And uh, so, yeah, it's not unjust either. They, it's just silly. But I wanted to get that out of the way because they don't come back to it. But let's move on. So Posey makes the perfectly scientific point that you cannot change your sex. Let's play. I guess, um, you know, it Meaning is- Meaning what? How is her life, how is, that, how is his life over? Well, do you call him him or her? Uh, totally him. You see, that's the problem because uh, they, they were born a man and then, um, mm. And then they became a woman. So they can never be her. Absolutely. I don't think any man can ever become a woman. No. So then there's the problem, isn't it? What? Not, not lying. 
Well, it's not a question of not lying. It's a question of not necessarily understanding that somebody can be born in somebody else's body in the sense that you can be born uh, physically a man or a woman, but inside you may be, and, and it has been recognised, that you you might yourself be uh, an opposing sex in terms of how your brain works. Are you saying that well, that person should be discriminated against for the rest of the rest of the life because of the physicality of it? No, I'm saying what you've just said there is absolute nonsense. There's no way that you can be... You are your body. There is no, no separation but say, I'm sorry, between but that's, your biological sex. No, no, you see, I'm afraid that's wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> In what possible way would the DNA of a human build all the cells one sex except a tiny little bit of a brain that would be a different sex? Well, that's not necessarily... I mean, are, are you an expert in this? Well, I'd, I'd probably say I was more of an expert than somebody who thinks you can actually Well, you're just telling me that you're an expert because you're, because you're female and therefore... No, you, you use the word expert. I didn't use the word expert. You did. Yeah, well, you're, you're telling me that you can't possibly, but you have no expertise to back it up, whereas doctors who are experts will say that people can be born. In the, I mean, do you, do you accept... No, some... doctors don't say that. People who are invested, medical professionals who are invested in okay. the industry might well suggest that there is such a thing as being born in the wrong body. Doctors who actually care about patients and truth and honesty don't say such things. I mean, perfect. I, I love the cojones on her, just to stand her ground and be like, go to hell. Yeah, good for her. And James Max, absolutely insufferable yeah I, it's just really like, bad but i i love the point that he's like yeah but it's uh this person was discriminated against because they said they were a woman and then they weren't and then what well, the job was for a woman to buy it's it's not like stacking shelves you know it, it it doesn't matter what sex you are if you're stacking shelves or you know working in a pub or in a kitchen right that's not the this it's not of note but if it is relevant well then it is relevant and it is if being a woman that, is part of the criteria of the job then it's funnily enough it's okay for them to to say okay, well, if you are a man, then maybe it's not all right. Yeah, and then he's like, yeah, well, there are doctors who would say that uh, you can change your sex, and, and, and Kelly's just like, no, what are you talking about? I mean, it's absolutely not. And uh, does he reference any doctors? No, he doesn't. He doesn't, he doesn't say which, he doesn't say what. Just, just, there are doctors out there. There are people out there. He I mean, swears. there are people out there that say everything. It doesn't mean you're right. Yeah, anyway, but the, if we go to the next link on here, so I want to demonstrate the link first so people can find it please john which is uh that there is of course a section we followed for next link please which is robert uh, professor robert winston who is a professor of fertility has a million you know letters after his name and uh is uh, an excellent guy i actually met him when i was in secondary school i went to a talk of his it, it was quite weird being a secondary school kid and he turns out he's like you're gonna get fifty thousand ster sperm by the end of my talk it's like yeah, fertility professors, <laughs> weird people. <laughs> he was talking to the audience, not just me, but <laughs> yeah, it's just like you, it, you specifically. <laughs> but yeah, he's uh, he's now the professor of science and society at the Imperial College London, and professor of fertility studies at Imperial College London as well. And he went on Question Time and just well gave the scientific version of events, let's say, because it is what it is, and there is no arguing with it. And of course, the Question Time host decided that well, the science might say that, but my feelings, and tries to correct him in big quotation marks there. Let's play the next clip. I'm interested in your view, given that you were Vice-Chancellor of Sheffield Hallam, weren't you, for, for some time. I mean, this, you've mentioned Kathleen Stock, and, and that's an, a trans uh, issue, but obviously academic freedom has, has been talked about in a number of areas I was, in recent I was, I years. I was rather hoping that you'd be interested in my opinion as a biologist, which is, seems rather more important, because I could have said Well, I'm just saying, well, only because the issue well, of academic freedom isn't solely uh, I'm about to say something which will mean trends. that you'll probably want to edit the programme when I finish. But oh, basically... Okay. <laughs> right. OK, I, we're I all say, braced for I will, it. I will say this categorically, that you cannot change your sex. Your sex actually is there in every single cell in the body. You have a chromosomal sex, you have genetic sex, you have hormonal sex, you have all sorts of different kinds of psychological brain sex, they're all different. And we are very confused about this, unfortunately, and, and regrettably, it's got into this argument that people are now would, will now accuse me of being transphobic. Well, obviously, there are trans people who say you absolutely can do that. Well, unfortunately, you can't say this publicly. This is one of, this is one of the big problems. Even saying, saying this on this programme undoubtedly will result in my getting a huge amount of hate mail. It always does. But I, 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 I do think it's, it, it's a big issue about... The attitudes, there are, of course, issues which are important about young people who are confused about their sex, but we won't go down that route here. 
but it does affect a whole lot of issues in schools and elsewhere in our society. Of course, we should accept people as they are. Overall, I think it's a very sad thing that we can't discuss biological science without actually getting completely caught up emotionally with something which is really completely wrong. Well, as I say, there are, there are, there are people who, who would vehemently disagree with you, so I'm just going yes, to make, make that clear. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, right, so I'm the number one scientist in the room on this topic. You know, got loads of years in fertility studies, the number one guy in the country, if not maybe like all of Europe on this issue. And uh, he's like, yeah, so here's this scientific stuff. She goes, yes, but there are people who disagree with you. I'm like, not because the science has changed, not because any of the evidence has changed, not because biology has been found out to all been false the whole time, and it's not a science or something. Uh, no, just, just believes. Thoughts. Okay. I mean, this this is taught essentially as fact in medicine and psychology. I mean, I didn't have a single lecturer that doubted that sex dictates what gender you identify with, and you know, gender dysphoria is still a thing in the UK, thankfully. And although it's been removed through political pressure in the states, I think people who are serious about their academic discipline can identify that actually it's not a healthy thing. Yeah. I mean, the people who have it, and I imagine that they would actually prefer not to have this, this dif dysphoria between their actual biological identity and how they identify themselves. You can see the sadness of the professor at the end there, who's like, God, I wish I could just talk about science like we used to be able to <laughs> 10 years ago. Well, he, he used to be able to do what he want and just talk facts and now, nah, facts are verboten. Anyway, let's go to the next clip and we can see Kelly talking about this, about whether or not you could be born gay or, or a woman, which is a weird thing to bring up, but James tries. Can uh, okay? Let's let's just establish how that. Can you be born? Uh, can you be born gay? I think there are two routes to homosexuality. According to someone like Sheila Jeffries, you can either be born gay or you can choose to be gay. You can choose to be gay. Well, yeah, that's according to really? people who have written about it. Yeah, right. I mean, I, you'd have, probably have to survey the entire population of gay people. I certainly know some gay people who don't think they were born gay, and I know plenty that do. Right. OK, that's interesting. Um, OK, and so you don't think that you could be born female, but in fact, in, in terms of how you operate, you, 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 you are a man? No, I think you can probably be born any sex and behave in any way, and that doesn't really change your biological structure. But isn't that because you are certain on who you are, in the sense that I'm pretty certain on who I am, and therefore we can we can come at this subject with the knowledge and the experience that we have. But you can never be in the body, in the mind, in the brain of somebody else. And, and in fact, by saying the things that you're saying is pretty hateful, pretty disturbing, and pretty How unpleasant. Is it I think what you're saying is pretty hateful towards women, actually, that somebody can just rock up and decide to change. They don't decide. Uh, of course they do. No, you Everything see, that's the problem. Decision. That's the problem. You're assuming that they do. Whereas I'm saying, I, I don't know. I'm not an expert in this and, I, and I'm not right. somebody. And, th and therefore, uh, I, I am unsure. But people tell me who have gone through transitioning, it's probably the most difficult thing to, to, uh, to face, to confront, to deal with. Probably and really because of the views of people like you, it means that they are facing discrimination at every turn and you're making their lives worse. Yeah. I, I love how just we put it there. She does respond in a minute and we'll play it. But I, I love the fact she just immediately hits back. And you can see how the conversation has degenerated into, well, I've lost the argument, so I'll just call you hateful. And she's like, no, you're hateful against women. Just hit oh, back twice. It's so painful just because go to hell. Why, why is he talking as any authority? He, he clearly also knows says, nothing. You're no expert, but then also is putting himself on a pedestal. Mm. I mean, I am an expert because I have the politically correct opinions, not because I have the scientific knowledge, but because of the politically correct opinions. His basic argument is just that, OK, because people say they are something, we must listen to them. I mean... Not an argument. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, anyway. Are, are you two years old? Let's go to the next clip in which uh, she makes the point that she doesn't want men in women's spaces, and that's what's important about this topic. I just don't want men in women's spaces, and I don't care how those men identify. So it's up to everybody, however they want to live, live their lives, that's fine. But when it impeaches upon my life... How does it impinge on your life? life? Well, if I want to go in a female-only space and there's men in there who decide that they're women, then it's no longer a female-only space, is it? But then uh, men if, were told my... that they wanted to have men over any spaces, and then they were told that that was discrimination. They weren't allowed to do it. Good point. So are men more unsafe oh, now they can't have the golf clubs? Well, it's not a question of uh, it's not a question of safe. It's just that it's cake and eat it, isn't it? Well, it is for women. 
Right. It is a question of safety for women. We are much what, so less all men are predators? in unisex spaces. No, not all men. Just the one, some are, and we don't know which ones they are. That's why we have segregated spaces. Right. <laughs> I mean, isn't it better that we try and train all people to be a little bit more respectful to each other? No argument. Well, when we don't have any men committing sexual assault, rape and domestic violence, then I will totally agree with you that we could do that. But until that happens, I'm and, afraid... And sorry, and so women, women don't commit those crimes as well? Not at the rate of men, no. And they certainly don't commit rape. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I was watching a stream yesterday called it on Academic Agents uh, channel and there was a, a section there where he was talking about the force of feminists like the, the, the way they've won their cultural uh, power and then well it's been devolved and now they're trying to win it back and uh, you can see it in Posey Parker the fact that she's forceful about this conversation I'm just not going to believe any nonsense I'm not going to have any nonsense conversations with you and uh, I, I just I think it's amazing there's also obviously the point about well women's only spaces are a safety issue because you can't have men in there such as a prison you cannot have a male rapist been sent to a female prison because he claims that he's a woman and then rapes the female inmates as has happened in the UK this is not even a what if <laughs> the thing is we're, we're both obviously in favour of equality before the law for the, the different sexes, but that you have to make some concessions. It's not just, yeah, anyone can use any bathroom, that's fine. Well, this because is... you have to accommodate for reality as well. Men and female-only spaces are important, of and course. they should both be allowed. And you say, of course, but we don't have that. <laughs> and, uh... I know, it's so common sense, it almost seems silly to say it, doesn't it? But Yeah, uh, there's also obviously the point, I mean, uh, Posey will correct herself in a minute. Of course, male-only spaces are not just like the golf club. It's, it's about, you know, male domestic violent shelters as well also exist and need to be a male-only space because, well, he's been beaten up by his wife. Why would he want to isn't, be women? Isn't the, uh, the data that a lot of the time, like, physical assaults are often instigated the majority of the time by women? I don't, have, I don't have the data. I think I have that off the top of my head. I could be wrong, obviously. It, it <laughs> I don't have it in true. front of me, but yeah. it, I think it's true. But let's go to the next one, in which we have uh, him just saying that she should be cancelled now, So he, because he's lost all the arguments, and he's already tried calling her hateful. He's just like, right, you shouldn't be allowed to talk anymore, because he lost. Let's play it. Okay. Uh, I, I am slightly staggered by your views on the basis that... Uh, that biological sex I, 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 I may have to change people. my mind. Maybe it was right that if you take those views, maybe you should be cancelled. Oh, no. Wow. You're on talk radio, right? Yes. Okay. And you think people should be cancelled for having a view? No, I don't, I don't think they should be. I don't think people should be cancelled, and I would like people to have different views, but it's just I, I, I find it staggering that you, you would want to have this kind of discrimination perpetrated against people who are do born different from you. No, even... I want men out of women's spaces. That's not born different, that's a biological fact. And that biological fact determines whether or not somebody is a risk to women. And is it okay if men, totally okay, all right, fine, no, no, I understand. Insane. No, I understand. So is it okay if men said that they wanted women out of their spaces? Is that all right? Do you mean like private spaces like toilets and places where men might undress? Might be. Well, absolutely, of course women shouldn't be in those spaces. Okay, and uh, what about other places? Like what? I don't know, like what bars, restaurants or anything else. I mean, should we just go back <laughs> to segregated society? This. The reason feminists <laughs> evolved existed. decided that they wanted to eradicate some of those men only spaces is because in those corridors of power, that's where important conversations were taking place and women, by not being allowed in those spaces, were out of the conversation. That is a very different thing than wanting to keep men out of women's spaces like when women are undressing. I mean, I'll ask you the age-old question. Does my 15-year-old daughter have the right to go in a female-only space and expect there only to be females? But if there are only females, if somebody is um, or has transitioned, then they are a female. Well, 90% of men that say they transition have no intention of taking hormones or losing their genitals. And so as far as I'm concerned, uh, you don't transition anywhere. There's no such thing. Nobody ever changes from one sex to another. But certainly what we're talking about predominantly with men is men over the age of 40 deciding that they want to dress as women. It's what we used to call transvestites. And so this whole transgender just totally loses the fact of what really is going on. Most people who call themselves trans are not transsexuals. They're transgender. They're transvestites in old language. Right. OK, well, then let's leave the old language. Kelly J. Keane, founder of Standing for Women. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here.
Did you see how he thinks he won that? Well, it's like, no, you, you got destroyed, mate. The fact he was talking about segregating things like restaurants, just like, thing. yeah, you're going to go out to dinner with your wife, your, your girlfriend. She's <laughs> like, you know what, love? You're, you're sitting over the other side. I'm going to sit on my own. You can tell he hasn't thought about it at all. He's taken like Jim Crow laws from Southern America from like, what is it, the 50s, 40s and whatnot, and just been like, yeah, what if that on sex? Because we never <laughs> had that in this country. Never mind on sexual basis. And he just made it up. We'll go back to the ages of sex. Back to what? Wait, when was that the case? <laughs> I also find it ridiculous that it, this is a recent phenomenon. So in his lifetime, he agreed with her mm. because there, there was no alternative. Mm. So he's acting all high and mighty when in reality, for most of his life, he's held that position and he's acting as if he can't even understand it or comprehend it, although he says he does. Not even that. It is hateful and should be cancelled. <laughs> Shouldn't even be allowed to be had. I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> I also just have to mention, I mean, Patience of a Saint in, uh, in Posey there. I, oh, yeah, I, it was a, a, a top performance by her, obviously. Yeah. You could tell how you could get peed off dealing with someone like uh, this and having that discussion, but uh, she didn't. She, she didn't remain calm. She, she dealt with it very well. Yeah. I would have been a bit more annoyed than If you can scroll up on this, was. John, this uh, I was going to go through it, but we don't have the time. It's basically just him arguing with people on, on Twitter because he lost and I, I don't think took that well. And uh, so still not really getting the message. And if we go to the next one, uh, Debbie Hayden decided to come out and say that, that she was going to go on there and talk to him about this as well. And this is when the cat sort of left the back, because you remember he said the experts, the experts agree with me on this. The experts agree with the politically correct position that you can change your sex, not the scientific position that you can't. So, and uh, well, we found out why. And if we can play the next clip, it's because his experts are Stonewall. That's the people I think what you said about. before about it being a complex issue, in some ways it is, but in some ways it's a very simple issue that there are two sexes, there are male and there are female, and what you got wrong was forgetting that and concentrating on something else, which I think is called gender identity, which is unclear and is uh, ethereal, and I think has caused huge damage to trans rights over the past 10 years. We need to refine trans rights in reality, not on this fantasy. OK, so are you telling me then that uh, the people who are defied trans, so uh, say, for example, if one goes to the people who are experts, because a lot of people will say, look, uh, if you don't feel like you know very much about trans people, they start off, uh, and this is Stonewall. Stonewall. <laughs> he then goes on to quote Stonewall for a stupid purpose, which I don't care about because we've all heard it a million times. Stonewall no more than the biological and psychological consensus. That's great. A charity that has well, a, a, a financial, group. well, yeah, a so-called charity that has a vested interest in propagating these ideas to maintain their own business. I mean, they literally get funded by the government on this basis, though increasingly defunded by the government, thanks to Liz Truss. And so, yeah, Posey, you were right. You were absolutely right. He, he is not quoting experts. He is quoting a lobbying group as his experts. And uh, then he decides, well, okay, that looks silly, or at least seemed to admit that looks silly. And he's got some more experts lined up, not just not just a lobbying group who, who are obsessed with this stuff. No, he went with uh, quoting Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson. What? Let's, let's play. The stars of Harry Potter have made their statements about all of this. So, so Daniel Radcliffe, and some would say, well, he's a bloke, so what does he know? But he said, transgender women yes. are women. Emma Watson, so... She says, trans people are who they say they are and deserve to live their lives without being constantly questioned or told that they aren't who they say they are. I don't care. I don't care what two stupid actors have to say. Yeah. The, the biological consensus is what's important. You know, the biological reality, the evidence of your own eyes, James. And instead, he, he doesn't accept that. Anyone who cites uh, actors and actresses as their kind of philosophical true north. Well, biological has... experts. <laughs> Why? Because they have the politically correct opinion. They know magic, don't you know? They, mm. they, they must have the right <laughs> they can answers. They change the sex with a flick of the wand. Well, <laughs> a little bit of potion, I suppose. And the last thing I wanted to mention, if James stumbles across this, which is, think of what you're asking for. Also, Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson, think of what you're asking for if you say that someone can change their sex and should be treated as they, as they say. They just say they're a woman, they should be allowed to go to a woman's prison, for example. Well, then we have an example, don't we? I mean, this is the dog nonce we covered, but there are plenty of other examples of people who are transgender and therefore decide I want to go to a woman's prison and the policy is go ahead even though you're a rapist even though you're a nonce even though you're a sexual predator go for it and uh, many a sad story becomes of that because what were you expecting to happen? I think this is the best advertisement for these people aren't exactly right. Hmm. It's uh, if you're dealing with people you are going to get people not angels and therefore well we have to deal with them as people anyway.
So that's why I think Posey Parker is demonstrating that the Turfs are going to win that battle, which is the fact that she's very forceful and uh, strong on the topic and doesn't take no S. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this epoch that Carl and Bo did together on Saturnalia and the history of Christmas. But if you'd like to find out what else is coming out on the website, you can always follow us on getter.com with lotuseaters underscore com being the at. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.